Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Continuation of Genesis 24, verse 32. Now, we've been talking about is Abraham's servant going out searching for a bride for Isaac. And you get Genesis 24, the previous message. And the man came in the house. This is the servant. He ungirded his camels. He had uh, ten of them. And gave straw and provender for the camels, food and water. And water to wash his feet. Find that in the Gospel of John. You're going to see the Gospel. You're going to see the life of Jesus Christ. You're going to see the life of a Christian. Abraham, a type of, of God the Father. Isaac, the type of Jesus Christ. The servant, a type of the Holy Spirit. And Rebecca, type of church. Now, types don't go all the way now. You cannot prove a type 100%. And they were set, and there was set meat before him to eat. And he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, Speak on. So I'm, before I sit down and have a meal, I'm going to take care of my beasts first. Then we're at this table. We got this assembly here in Laban's house and the father of Re Rebekah. Everybody's at the table. And the servant's going to say, I've got these people here, as you find in Acts chapter 10 with Cornelius. And I'm not going to waste this moment to have a meal. I'm going to use this moment to brag about Abraham. I'm going to brag about God. Because I have a testimony. He said, I am Abraham's servant. Abraham a type of God the Holy Spirit is a witness is a servant of God and the Lord has blessed my master greatly he has become great and that doesn't mean size that means in riches and God has it all and if there's anything that God is lack, lacking according to Genesis chapter 1 let there be and boom and he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men service and maid service and camels and asses and Laban's eyes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger he was attracted to when his sister came in with the gold and bracelets and like I said Lord willing when we get to Laban later on we look at Jacob you're gonna see it so and Sarah my master's wife bared a son to my master when she was old. Now, who is Sarah when it, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? I said types don't go all the way. There is no mother of God. So here you can't put that type. But as far as Abraham, there was this woman, his wife. She was great age. And she had a son. And unto him... He has given all that he has. Unto the son of Sarah, Abraham has given everything that I just mentioned to that son. And there's no talk of Ishmael at all. God the Father has given everything, according to Paul, to Jesus Christ. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. No, no mixed marriage. 
I don't care what you I don't care what you think about mixed marriages and stuff like that. The Bible says that the Jewish people are to be a pure race of people. And they'll blow it when Judah comes along. But that's not the idea that God had of Israel. He had them to be a pure, particular race of people that say, Hey, you know what? If we want to learn about the God of all, the God of creation, there is one particular people that are over there in a place called Israel, called Jerusalem, with the temple. If we want to get away from all this nonsense of these fallen gods, we want God. We're to go to this particular race of people called Jews. That's why that temple was built with splendor of gold and all that. It's to say, this is God. That's what the Jews were to be for. A light to the Gentiles, and they blew it. But thou shalt go unto my father's kindred, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son, and which turns out to be Abraham's brother, daughter. And you know family relations. I don't. So you say, well, that's incense. Incense. Oh, I can't get those two words right. But there's no law. There's nothing right now that says you can't do that. Right now. And what God has established is the fact is, as I build this nation, Abraham has to be with his sister. Because there's no one else. Going back to Adam and Eve. Who was Adam to have a relationship with? Had to have been his sister. Who did his children have to have relationships with? Had to be the, their, their sisters. And God wants his one pure race of people. Isaac, you're going to get a, a, a wife from my family. It will be 100% Abraham. And then your sons are to find wives of our family. And you're, which Abraham doesn't know, but you're going to have 12 boys. And when they get wives, they're supposed to be of the family. And as they start having children, and as it starts having children, and they start having children, then once you get into the law of Moses, and you get to Joshua, and they're in the land, well, now there is so much population that you can only marry your race, and it doesn't have to be sister, nephew, uncle. There's more to choose from for husband and wife. Right now, it's not so. Cousins. And they make a big joke about cousins. Yeah, but right now, we have this side of law. Americans are not trying to build one race of people. America's anything but one race. God wants these Jewish people pure. And that includes their blood. He wants their blood to be purely Jewish blood. Abraham messed, well, Abram messed it up with Hagar. He put some uh, Egyptian blood in there. And when you mix Jewish blood with Egyptian blood, when you mix Jewish blood with Edomite blood, with Ishmaelic blood, you got a problem for the Jews that spread out long and far. God is God is not deceived that God is not willing that any I mean God is not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. God is really when you as a Jew, they got a high standard. Because they are God's people. They are God's bride. I've got you at such a high standard. If you're gonna mess up outside what I tell you to do, you're gonna reap it for years. No other nation is, is, is called as Jacob's trouble. And that's for all the harm that they've done for not listening to God. Babylon is because they didn't listen to God. So the master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son, Isaac, of the daughters of Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my family, my father's house. Now, when we read the story, we're going to go through it again. He did not use a GPS. He shows up before a well. He starts praying to God, and boom, Rebecca shows up, and she happens to be of Abraham's family. And that is the directed will of God in a man's life to bring you where you need to be. 
What if this servant decided to go his own way? Rebecca never been found. What if Rebecca rebelled against her family? I'm not going to go get water today. We already talked about that. It would not have happened. God has set these two people, the servant and Rebecca, to be at one particular well. How many wells were there? You can't count them. How many wells were worldwide? You can't count them. This says B.C. 1857. That's the best date they came up with. I'm not going to say it's wrong. But according to the Bible date, 1857, how many wells there were, and yet this man shows up at this well, this daughter shows up at this well, this man is looking for a particular family. Abraham had three brothers. One died. This girl is born of a man who happens to be of Abraham's brother. That's God. So you say what you want about, about Isaac being with Rebecca as far as family relations. God ordained this. And you got a problem with that, you go to God and say, God, I have a problem with it. And then you and God deal with it. Right now, I see this as a remarkable event that happens. That God brought two people together, far, far circumstances. And here they are in one place. Abraham's servant is dining right now in the house with Abraham's servants. I mean, Abraham's family, excuse me. He says, Thou shalt take a wife to my son, of the, not the sons of Dory, land I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my father's house. He's there right now, sitting at the table with his brother's family. And he's never been there before. He wouldn't know Abraham's family from any family of the world. And to my kindred, Jerry is in the house. Going to have a meal with them. And get this, they are responsive to Abraham's servant. And they don't know who Abraham's servant is from. Cockadoobo's servant. What we're reading is God ordained, God designed to be here. And everybody has a free will. The servant said, no, I don't, I don't want to do it. Rebecca said, no, I don't want to do it. Laban said, get out of here. Or rob them. But you go to my father's house and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son. Now notice another thing here. Isaac has no say in a wife that he's going to marry. Abraham has not talked to his son. Isaac's not talked to the dad. The servant has not talked. Okay, Isaac, give me a checklist. What do you want? You want blonde? You want they're so tall? You want muscular? What do you want? No, 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 no. When it comes for a bride for Isaac, Abraham says, I'm going to send my best servant, my reliable servant. That's the man I'm going to see. Because if I send Isaac, other parts might do his doing, and he might not choose the right woman. I'm trying to be clean. At least the servant is going to use sent, and the servant is going to pray, which he has. And I said unto my master, pre-adventure, pre the woman will not follow me. What if I find a woman and they won't come? She won't come. And he said unto me, the Lord Jehovah, before whom I walk, will send his angel with thee. Well, there he is. Are there angels out there that guide men? According to Abraham, yes, there is. That guy didn't have a GPS. He had an angel. I couldn't think of anything. He had an angel guidance. And prosper thy way. God in that angel. And it doesn't say the angel of the Lord, it just says his angel. God's personal angel is going to guide you. And we read in Revelation that there are angels over the seven church periods. And we read that there's an angel of the sun, there's an angel of the river Ephraim, there's angels all over the place in the book of Revelation. There is an angel right now guiding this servant to find a proper body bride for Isaac and if I were to name a name for the angels and I'm speculating here and can be thrown in the garbage can 
But Daniel says that Michael, the archangel, is the angel over the children of Israel. Gabriel is an angel, but he's never said to be an archangel. The only archangel in the Bible is Michael. And Michael, according to Daniel, is the angel over Israel. I would assume that this is the angel Gabriel, uh, Michael. As Israel is starting to build into a nation. And if Michael is that archangel over Israel, Michael would be the one. I could be wrong. Okay? I could be 200% wrong here. But if it is Michael, his job is to make sure that the Israel race becomes Israel and not taboo like Hagar, like Esau, like Ishmael. Now, like I said, I can be totally wrong on that. If I am, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ right now that may not show up. As ash is the judgment seat of Christ. But that's something to think about. Because an archangel. Wouldn't that would be one of the angels. Of the angels be right by God's side. If there are a level of order of angels. There is no other archangel. Gabriel has importance. That he brings the birth of John the Baptist. And he brings the birth and announcement of Jesus to Mary. But he's not an archangel. Michael contends with Satan about the body of Moses, the lawgiver. So I'm going to assume that this angel is Michael building Israel. And I can be wrong. I'll send my angel with thee. With thee. Not before thee, not after thee. With you. And prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kid. Now look at Abram's faith. That will take a wife. But what if I can't find anybody who will come? You will find a wife. Somebody will come. And my father's house. Then thou shalt be clear from this oath. When thou comest to my kindred. And if they give not thee one. Thou shalt be clear from this oath. Alright. If they won't give that woman free will. And the oath is, is gone. You're not liable anymore. The only way you can get out of this oath servant. Is they say no. She says no. But you're going to find a woman. Okay. Styley. You're going to preach to Gentiles. The gospel of Jesus Christ. They're going to hear the word of God. But they have the option to say. No I don't want it. And if they don't want it and tell me, God, that they don't want the gospel, they don't want Jesus Christ, then I have given you the oath that you are now broken. You have done what you were supposed to do. You have no blood on your fingertips. It is their fault. The Bible tells me, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This servant has a good news. Hey, I got a rich Sir, I got a rich master, and he's got a great son who's going to get all those riches. Do you want to marry him? Now, let me ask you a question. What was one of the few parables that Jesus used when he spoke to Israel? Wasn't there a man that made a marriage for his son? Wasn't there a man that made a marriage feast for his son? Here it is. They knew exactly what, God, what Jesus Christ was speaking. They were just in the dark. Here's this man is sent out for a marriage. Who is he? He's Abraham. Who's the who's the groom? Isaac. Who's the bride? Gotta be in the Jewish family. Abraham's family. So, great thing. Then thou shalt be clear from this oath when thou comest to my kindred. Here he is, he's there. And if they give not thee one. Thou shalt be clear from my oath. And you got to wonder, too. Is this the only family that Abraham has left? Milka married, built. There's not many of those around yet to have children, 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 children. We read a couple, a couple chapters before Milka did bear. That one family gap, here they are in chapter 24. And they're, they're, they're slim pickings. It looks like the only pickings that God has for Isaac is Rebecca. That's the only one. Isn't that remarkable? This servant finds this woman. 
and she's the only woman that would match Abraham, would match God for Isaac. That's wonderful. That's God. And they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from this oath, my oath. And I came this day, now he's telling what happened. And I came this day unto the well, read it early in this chapter, and said, O Lord God, my master Abraham. Now you're going to find exactly what happened to the servant is exactly what is told to his family. He doesn't change it. He doesn't lie. He doesn't brag. He doesn't stretch the story. And when the Holy Spirit comes to a lost family, comes to a lost person, he's going to tell them exactly what the gospel is without the doodads. Christ died for your sins. You are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. You're going to die. And the only way you can get out of the afterlife of hell is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Talking to a guy today. Well, we don't believe Jesus is God. Who asked for your smelly armpit decision? And then challenging me. Well, who wrote the Bible? Well, who wrote your Bible that you're carrying under your arm that you are going to try to quote to me? Your world translation. The Holy Spirit does not wear a clown's uniform. He does not do magic tricks. He does not have Tootsie Rolls. He comes with the blood of Jesus Christ. And that blood of Jesus Christ has been preached from the 12 apostles sent by Jesus Christ after he resurrected to the Father and is at the right hand of the Father today and has not ever been changed but by worldly Christians. And when you bring this junk into the world today, in order to get people saved, that's not the Holy Spirit. Because you see here, I have food. No, no, no. Put the food away. I am not going to eat until I have the gospel of the good news of Abraham. Put the food away. I got all your attention. Let me tell you about Abraham and his son. What would that be for us? Let me tell you about God and Jesus Christ. Well, shall we eat? No. My errand is to tell you that Jesus saves and Jesus alone. And if you don't want to believe that, then I am cleared. I have done what God's told me to do. You're in trouble with God. I am not. O Lord God of my master Abraham, and now thou do prosper my way, which I go. Give thanks to God, pray to God. He's not just asking for God. Man, he's reverencing God. He's thanking God. He's blessing God. He's saved. Behold, I stand by the well. God knew that. Of water. And it shall come to pass that when the virgin, the virgin, cometh forth to draw water, I, and I should, uh, I, Say to her, give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. Now, he, this is the prayer. God says, he says to God, the, the virgin. And I got 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 4. I want a virgin. I want her to come to this well. I want her to draw water with her pitcher. All right, I want a virgin. Well, I want a female first of all, because Isaac can't mate, mate with a male. I got to say that 2017. All right, one. She's got to come to this well. Two. She's got to have her pitcher. Three. She's got to draw the water. Four. This is a fleece. He doesn't say anything about being blonde or anything. Nothing about beauty. He's looking for a hard-working woman. That's one of the, the requirements for the for, uh, Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman, hard worker. Beauty is vain, the Bible says. And she shall, and she say to me, number five, 
both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Number six. Look at the things he's laying out for God to make sure. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord has appointed out for my master's son. God, you provide that woman. These are the steps I want for her. And you can't go wrong with this one. Assure thee that he is asking God that I do the right thing. And watch God. Before I had done speaking in my heart, no one heard. Behold, Rebecca came forth. All right, so I'm not even done praying to God, and here comes Rebecca. God knows the prayer even before he says, okay, even before you, here she comes. Came forth with a pitcher on her shoulder. Duh, there. She went down to the well. There it is. And drew water. There it is. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, there it is. I will give thy camels drink, there it is, also. So, when we did the first part of this chapter, we said, Where did Rebecca get the idea, I'll water your camels too? And I think we said, What, 100, how many gallons? We said between 200 and 300 gallons of water for those camels. What gave her the idea to say, okay, here's a drink of water, now let me water your camels? God whispered in Rebecca's eye, take care of the camels too, because he asked me to, author to authorize you to do that, to make sure you're the right woman. All right, here's your drink. Okay, let me water your camels too. And she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, whose daughter art thou? He has no idea who this girl is. And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, there is Abraham's brother, whom Milcah bare unto him. We just saw that three chapters ago. Milcah. All right. And I put the earring upon her face. Uh-oh. Ears can be the face. And the bracelet upon her H-A-N-D-S and women don't wear bracelets on their hands. They wear them on the wrist. Scripture with scripture. I'm sorry. That's black and white. So he rewards Rebecca for the work that she's done by earrings and bracelets. This servant would not be a servant if he did not pay for the labor that was given to him. And you find plenty of places in the book of Proverbs where if you do not reward someone's labor, you are wrong. Phew, I knew I was going to sneeze. So this man is telling Rebecca, for every work that you do, do you're going to be properly re rewarded for your service. And she doesn't even know half the story right now. Oh, by the way, Rebecca's not in the room when he's doing this. She's off in the kitchen with mom and all that. He's meeting with the men. This is the Oriental and the Middle Eastern concern that the women are off in the, in the kitchen. The men aren't talking. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord. This is still the testimony he had. And bless the Lord God of my master Abraham. He's not, he, he is so humble. He's not even calling God his God because he's not worthy to be called. Does that remind you of somebody that God told you about a prayer life? There was one man saying, I'm God, I'm not as this guy, I'm not God, I'm the charger, blah, 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 blah. And there was a guy who wouldn't even look up to heaven and say, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's this guy right here. The Holy Spirit is not looking for praise. He's not looking for you to worship him. He is humble. And he will not cause you to stumble. Master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And he had no idea that this was going to happen before Rebecca came. He didn't even know who Rebecca was until he asked her, who are you? 
And when he finds out who she is, where he is, what's just happened, he can only praise God and not by chance. This is no way this could be a chance. The odds of this servant, when he left Abraham's house with the ten camels, the odds that this man would run into what we run into Genesis chapter 4, no professional gambler would take those odds. You got to lay the odd on a particular location in the world. I don't know what those odds are. I don't know anything about odds. You had to take the, the odds that of all the families in the world, or just the known world right here, let's just take the known world. One particular family had to be met. What is the odds of that? And then you had to be at the particular location of the right well. And I said, how many wells were there? I can't count the odds. And of all the girls in this area that served this well, Rebecca had to come out at the right time. What is the odds for that? No professional gambler would ever take that bet. I would assume you would have better chances of winning a slot machine than you would where God is working right here. And do you know where you can find this, what we just read about uh, another woman in the Bible? When it talks about Ruth and it says her hap have to be in the field of Boaz. How many other barley fields were there in Bethlehem? The, the house of bread, barley bread. There are probably a lot of them. And God directed that woman to that right field, to the right family member. And then when Ruth comes home and she tells Naomi, hey, I f fell upon this, this land called Boaz. And R Naomi's like, wow, guess what? Genesis 24, that's our family. That is the family of your husband that died. You see what God's doing? Later on, watch Satan mess with this girl called Rebecca. Watch. We are in the line of Jesus Christ. Watch Satan intervene. This is so great. Verse 49. And now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, Abraham. And if not, tell me. And I will turn to the right hand or to the left hand. He is seeking parental permission now. Can I take Rebecca as I've told you? There's no elopement. Going to the to the father of the bride and say, Can I take this woman to be now this is not Isaac, this is the servant. And now if you'll do kind truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me. I may turn to the right hand or to the left. There's no one else. Rebecca is it. Then Laban and Bethu answered and said, I don't know why her brother answers before the father. But you knows that. Her brother speaks before the father. Laban is the brother. Bethu is the father. Laban is going to cause Rebecca's son a lot of trouble coming up in the next few chapters. And when you see what Laban does to Jacob for his daughter's hand in marriage, wow. The thing proceeded from the Lord Jehovah. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. If it came from God, we're not going to fight against God. And I would assume from the walk of Terah and Abraham, that Bethu would know something about God and the calling of Abraham. Because you find him in Genesis 11 and Genesis 12. Bethu knows about Abraham in his testimony. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord Jehovah again. Bowing himself to this guy is constantly praising God, and he's a servant. Get the one. 
Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go. That don't sound right, does it? Yeah, here's your take her. But they got great faith in Abraham and the God of Abraham. We trust her. And her and let her be thy master's son's wife. And it's funny here that you guys, Isaac is not named. You notice that? I don't know why he does not name Isaac. Oh, by the way, Re Rebecca, yeah? Your husband? Yeah, his name is going to be Isaac. What's that mean? Laughter. I don't know. Master son. As the Lord has spoken, it came to pass when Abraham's servant heard that these words, he worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. He's praising God. This is a miracle. These two get together. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver. What's one of the rewards of the judgment seat of Christ? Jewels of gold. What is the, the reward of the servant at the judgment seat of Christ? And raiment, white raiment, is the righteousness of the saints. And gave them re to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother, her brother, and to her mother. Don't know why the dad's not there. Precious things. And what is the other reward for a saint? Precious stones. Look at that. Gold, silver, precious stones are given as a gift. There they are. Rebecca, now that you have accepted marriage to Isaac, you are worthy, if you do right, to be served gold, silver, precious stones. Now notice he, they get the jewels and the precious things. Has she come in contact with Isaac yet? Have we been in contact with Jesus yet? Absolutely not. And yet we still get rewarded. How do you like that? All she said was, okay, I will marry him. I will receive him. I will receive the son of Abraham. I will receive Jesus Christ, the son of God, as my Savior. I didn't know anything about being a bride of Christ when I got saved. But I'm a bride of Christ. I didn't know anything about the judgment seat of Christ when I got saved. But I am worthy, if I do right, to receive gold, silver, and precious stone because I am the bride. And I get a raiment. And according to Revelation, that's white raiment, which is righteousness of the saints. Look at that. And she hasn't even met Isaac yet. I have not met Jesus Christ yet. Jesus told Thomas in so many words that blessed are they that have not seen. Rebecca hasn't seen yet, has she? Glory to God. And they did eat and drink. Oh, now comes eating and drinking. There's been no eating and drinking or anything until after she receives the marriage proposal. Not before, not during. Keep the goodies, cupcakes, and all that out of the salvation message. Celebrate after they trust Jesus. How do you know celebrating after Jesus, after you receive Jesus Christ? As you say, how do you know? Luke says that when that, that when that shepherd found that one lost sheep, what did the angels do? They rejoiced in heaven. When that woman found that lost coin, what did the angels do in heaven? They rejoiced that one has been lost, has been found. Now we're rejoicing. Now we're having a party. Now we're dining. Because one has been lost and said, I will receive the son. There it is. And the men that were with him and tarried all night. That's the church age. That's the church age all night. The morning, the day star, is when the sun comes up. That's the second advent. We're in the night. That's us. Tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning. Second advent. And he said... And he said, send me away unto my master. Send, send us, let's get going. Morning's gone, let's go, let's get out of here. And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten, Gentile number, after that she shall go. 
keep them, keep them in the world, keep them in Egypt for a little while longer. No, because he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord has prospered my way. Truth and life, no man comes unto the Father but by the Send me away that I may go to my master. We need to go. We need to go now. She does not need to stay here longer. And the family don't follow. He's not telling the family to come because they don't want to come. They didn't receive the proposal. Rebecca does. It's time to go. Laban, we know, doesn't get saved, doesn't get right when we come across him later. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Here comes a free will. Romans chapter 10. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? All right, you accepted the marriage proposal of the son. Next step. Do you want to step out from your family? Do you want to step out from the world? Do you want now to follow him? Do you now want to be a disciple? Except the man who hates his father, mother, brother, blah, 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 blah. He cannot be my disciple. You want to step away from your family? You want to do what Abraham did? I guarantee Bethel would tell about family stories how Abraham was called away. Will thou go with this man? The Holy Spirit. And she said, I will go voluntarily, free will. So I'll go. I'll leave. And they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. So she gets a nurse. So Rebecca has now received the offering for a, for a groom, the son of Abraham. We have received the offering of God the Father through Jesus Christ, his son. And as we take off, we got a sister and a nurse with us. We have brought two other people. Rebecca has brought two people with a journey. And Abraham's servant and his men. The servant is the Holy Spirit going with her. Men, the ones that go out in the world, those who preach the gospel. And they blessed, made happy Rebecca, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions. Now, that is prophecy, and that is true. What we want you to do is we want you to go to Isaac. Which, you know, we know he's Isaac. And we, out of Isaac, we want you to have thousands of millions of babies. Really? You're only going to have two. And she's going to be barren. But from Isaac and Rebekah, Esau, Edom, and Jacob... How many children have they had? You can't count them. Look at how many were killed just in World War II during that brief time of World War II. Let thy seed. Oh, where do you get the cross reference on that one? Genesis 3.15. A woman has no seed. There is Jesus Christ. And it was proclaimed by her brother or her mother or someone in the family they just told rebecca be thousands of millions but one jesus christ now that's remarkable possess the gate of those that hate them that'd be ishmael and that would be edom that'd be one of the children you're gonna have rebecca <laughs> You know, that's one of the things Rebecca deals with after they deceive daddy. Esau says in his heart, I'm going to kill that boy. And God said, hey, you need to get rid of Jacob. That's when it begins for Rebecca. Thy seed, Genesis 3.15, Jesus Christ. Circle that, mark that, highlight that, put neon lights on that. Phew. You haven't seen that since... Eve, I couldn't remember her name there for a minute. And Rebecca arose, and her damsels, and they rode upon camels. We don't ride on camels. We're, we're, typology doesn't go 100%. 
We're coming back on horses. But that's at the that's at the second advent. And they rode upon the camels and followed the men. Man, excuse me. They're following the Holy Spirit. She doesn't know where she's going. She has no idea what her calling is. She's got to follow the Holy Spirit. And the servant took Rebecca and went his way. God's plan, God's path. And Isaac, here's Isaac, came from the way of the well Laharai, for he dwelt in the south country, he's down south. Isaac's on his way to a well. Man, you count all the all the men and women that meet at a well and reference to the life of Jesus Christ. Now, can I stretch this again maybe and declare that if I'm wrong, I'll plead the blood of Jesus Christ, you can throw this in the garbage. Okay? He rose up, he's going to a well. A well has water, correct? Where does the Bible say in I think it's first or second Thessalonians? chapter 4 about the rapture where shall we meet at the clouds right water. don't clouds hold water <laughs> and isn't Jesus coming to meet us isn't that remarkable Jesus Christ is gonna meet us where water gathers where we're gonna gather as the bride of Christ minus no lost people only to save the father has allowed Isaac to go. And Isaac went out and meditate in the field at the eventide, getting late. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Now you can't press the camels as far as the rapture. You can't press the type 100%. We're not going to heaven on camels. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes. When we looked to the heavens, we lift up our eyes. When she saw Isaac, she lighted off her camel. No jokes, please. We're dealing with a serious thing here. The church meets Jesus Christ for the first time. For she had said to the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet? Again, the field's the world in the Bible, but Jesus is not in the field. You can't press that type. We're done with the typology. Straightness. And the servant had said, It is my master. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought the master was Abraham. Was it, wasn't my master Abraham? Is that what the servant said? Who are we dealing with right now? The son, Isaac. And the servant said that that is my master. So Isaac has to be Abraham. And Abraham has to be Isaac. That means God has to be Jesus. And Jesus has to be God. Because they are one. There it is. There it is. They also said that, that um, Abraham had given all to his son. I forget what. I forget what, where Paul, which one in the book, Galatians and all that, that it says it's all given to Jesus Christ. And yet they're both the one. They're both alive. And if you got a modern Bible, it probably messes us all up. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And that's proper respect for a woman then. You didn't go around flaunting yourself. Only Jezebel did that. Jezebel did not wear a veil and she painted her face. She was known to be a harlot. And the servant, now watch this, the Holy Spirit. The servant told Isaac all things that he had done. You know what's going to happen when that bride, that bride gathers together and we see Jesus? The Holy Spirit is going to tell Jesus everything that happened. Where is everything going to be happening? For the bride judgment seat of Christ everything that we've done that's not under the blood so there's the judgment of the saints right there and after the judgment Isaac brought her into his mother into his mother 
Sarah's tent. Again, we're off to type again. And took Rebecca, the bride of Christ, and she became his wife. But there is a typology you can put Sarah here. The nation of Israel is dead to God right now. They had rejected and crucified their Savior, their Messiah, Jesus Christ. Paul got to the point in the book of Acts saying, listen, I'm done with you guys. I'm finished. I'm going to the Gentiles. Now, not completely dead where the Jew can't be saved. Right now, I'm praying. There's two Jews I'm praying for right now. They're on the verge of getting saved. Amen. Glory to God. Sarah is the mother of the Jewish nation. And God is angry with them, and there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. He took Rebekah into his mother's tent, and she became his wife. Flesh joining flesh is marriage. When Jesus met with that woman, he says, go get your husband, and I can't go. She says, I ain't got no husband, I know. You've had, had four husbands, and the one you're with right now is not your husband. When flesh joins flesh, Scripture, and he loved her. And he loved her. Ephesians 5.25, Romans 5.8, and 8.35. For God so loved the world, and that the Christ loveth the church. So ought men to love their wives as God, Jesus Christ, loved the church. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. And we close the chapter. Genesis 22 and Genesis 24 are great, remarkable chapters about Calvary and the church. Remarkable. 